What's up, y'all? This is Lou. So right now I want to let you guys in on the exact moment that I learned about worker empowerment and how that became a big thing for me. So I was still in high school at the time, I believe. Uh, This was around 1996, 1997. And I used to work for a chain restaurant called Bennigan's. There used to be many of these restaurants around the United States. Um, TGI Fridays became one of the competitors to Bennigan's. So did Applebee's. Uh, Bennigan's was owned by the same parent corporation as another restaurant called Steak and Ale. Um, It was okay, like mid-tier restaurant, right? But it was uh, one of the central spots to go to dinner in Hampton, Virginia, which is the town that I lived in. And it was in the same parking lot as the mall. So if you were there for commerce, it was always right there. Um, The way I got a job there was two of my very close high school friends. They both worked there. And then I found out that like three other people from my high school worked there. That's already a little bit suspect when a large chain restaurant has a habit of hiring high school students. But um, they were they would hire them as like bussers and hosts. And then, you know, the longer you work there, you can move up to serving uh, or even dishwashing, which is where I ended up at, or cooking. Cooking was harder, though, because those cooks, they liked their jobs in terms of, like, the security and the amount of money they got paid. Um, so the cooks didn't often, there wasn't high turnover. But there was a line cook in the kitchen named Daryl. I'll never forget Daryl in all my life because Daryl did something that I did not know people could do. The restaurant had three managers, one GM and two assistant managers. Now, one of the assistant managers was Pakistani, a guy named Mazur. I got along with him okay, but no one liked him. Um, And I I understood why. He kind of had like a weird attitude problem and was just, he he had a habit of screaming at people. Jules, the the black assistant manager, seemed to be the coolest. Like everyone kind of wished that Jules was the GM. Um... He had a very chill attitude, very easygoing, laid back, easy to talk to type. But he was just that type of person. He was just naturally very chill. Uh, And then Bill. Bill also had a laid back, chill kind of personality. But Bill made decisions that seemed really suspect, you know, to people. Like he had a habit of he had a habit of putting people down on the sly or saying things behind employees backs that would eventually get back to them. Uh, Bill looked a lot like Peter Griffin from Family Guy if he lost weight. So all this went down on a night where it was like right before happy hour and I was working as a bar back. I had gone from hosting and bussing tables to bar backing because bar backing got a tip tip outs from the bar, which actually made, you know, made, made probably more tips than, uh, than the wait staff did. So I made okay money. You know, it wasn't, wasn't very good. You know, you get your $2 and 30 cents an hour plus tip share, plus tip share, not tips, tip share, (laughs) uh, which is like, you know, the pull together the tips and then tip, tip out to everybody gets some nonsense, basically like what's, what's the most, uh, convoluted way we can pay our employees and get away with it. So Bill and, and Daryl, Daryl was like, Daryl was like this skinny, Thick Coke bottle glasses, but but a real deep voice. You know, he talked, he talked like, talked like they had like a like a little southern drawl to his voice, you know, a little vernacular. And Bill was like, I don't remember what they were arguing about, but they got into an argument, and Bill said something out of pocket to Daryl, and Daryl walked the fuck out, like he walked out. No line cook, meaning no one's cooking steaks, no one's cooking lobsters, no one's doing the, no one is cooking. Happy hour was right about to happen, and then right after happy hour, dinner rush came. So it's like, not only did they need to stock the foods that they had for happy hour, because they had like a hot bar kind of thing, but the dinner rush was right behind that, and steaks were like their highest seller. So Bill lost his mind and I never seen this happen with a manager like I never saw this Daryl D- 
Daryl, you can't do this to me. He went running out into the parking lot. Daryl, you can't, you can't leave, Daryl. You got all the happy hours coming. They're, they're going to be coming in any, any minute now. And I mean, he was like, he was like begging this dude. And like, he was like nearly in tears. And, and all I heard Daryl saying was, Hey man, I ain't your motherfucking kid, man. You you can't you you don't you don't you don't need to talk to me like that. Like I don't let nobody, I don't let no man talk to me like that. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was in awe. I was like watching this, and I was like, Daryl has the upper hand. Daryl has the upper hand. Then it then I realized how useless some managers can be because I was always under the impression that the manager could do any job in the business, and they can't. Bill didn't know how to cook steaks. He probably, he might have grilled steak at home or something like that, but he wasn't about to get behind that. He wasn't about to get behind that line and start grilling. And then not only, Daryl was always on the grill. And then the funny thing is, is the fry, the fry cook, the fry cook, everybody, the fry cook was a guy named Mike. And the way the cook station was, Daryl's grill faced, you know, like if Bill's right here and he's on the line, Daryl faced him, but the fry cook faced the wall. So the fry cook like had his back and like Bill was like, hey, Mike. And Mike was like, nope, nope. Like he's looking down at his fryer like, nope, mm -mm, nope, nah, hey, that's his job. I ain't doing that. You want chicken fingers? You want French fries? You want onion rings? I'm your man. You want them steaks and lobsters and all that? You better go get Daryl. So at that, like, and, and that was... Mike could have tried to take Daryl's job right in that moment, and he didn't. He stuck by his guns. Like, I'm not, for, I don't even know how to do that 100%. Like, I'm going to mess up. You're going to yell at me. You ain't, you're not yelling at me. This is my job. This is what I'm doing. You want him to do his job? You go get him. Daryl, oh my God, you got to come back inside. Daryl, I need you. Daryl, you can't walk out on me. Daryl was, Daryl was like, just like looking at him like, what you going to do? What will it take? What, whatever it takes, Daryl. What, what, what will it take to get you back behind the line? What will it take? You don't ever talk to me like that again. I want $2 more an hour, and I ain't working weekends. All right, done, done. Whatever you need, done. What, just come back inside, please. And I was like, this dude really just railroaded the manager. He just, rail, he just mercilessly railroaded him. And that... Has been in my, that was in 19, either 1996, is 1996, 97, or 98. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, was it what? Because I was still in high school. Because I remember I got a job at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, like right after that. But I think I got that job. I quit Bennigan's to work at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, if, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, it's hard to remember 30 years ago. But that always stuck out in my mind about worker empowerment. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this video is about solidarity for the working class. Labor. I'm not in a union. I would love to be, but my industry is not unionized and I'm hoping to change that. Uh, I should have strove towards that earlier on in my life, but UAW, Teamsters, all of the unions in America legitimately fighting for the working class who are being called commies on CNBC. Uh, all, all, you, all of my, my fellow working class people. And you know what? I, it, the, your political ilk doesn't matter to me. We can discuss the finer points of politics. We can discuss whether or not you should be right wing or you should be left wing or you should be conservative or you should be liberal. We can discuss all of that and we still have more in common than we do with the CEOs. We have more in common with Daryl than we do. And Bill has more in common with Daryl than he ever did with the owners of that corporation. You understand? This has been Lou on your left.